Good evening. Good to have everyone out. Appreciate the opportunity to speak to you once again. It's my goal to preach the truth and only the truth and say anything not in accordance with God's word. Please bring it to my attention. If you would be turning your Bibles over to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1 is where we'll begin tonight. Talking about brotherly kindness. As we know, Peter here on this letter tells us about many things that we need to add to our faith, many things that we need to grow and we need to strive to be growing in. Let's read verses 5 through 8, if you would, with me. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have many things to grow in here, many things we need to add to our faith. As, as Brother Lanny talked to us about this morning, if we want to strive to be the perfect church, if we want to strive to be what God would have us to be, then we need to be growing, we need to be working. And as individual Christians, these are things that we need to be striving for as well. Tonight we're going to focus on brotherly kindness. Now unfortunately in our society and I think pretty much throughout human history, brotherly kindness a lot of times has been kind of lacking with a lot of people. Uh, and so many times Satan gets people so focused on their own self, their own selfish desires, on greed, uh, pride, things like this. They just want to they may be trying to cheat people out of money, use people for this purpose or that purpose, but too many times brotherly kindness is lacking. And for us as Christians, brotherly kindness is something we must practice, something we must strive to do. And it, we can certainly see that we need to show this kind of kindness to all people, to all men. But tonight I want to focus specifically on a specific type of relationship that we have, and that is with one another in Christ. If you would turn with me to Galatians 3, look at what God has to say. Who is my brother? I want to think about this relationship we have with one another. Pick up reading in verse 26 of Galatians chapter 3. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so we, when we were children... We're in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of, this, of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, if you, therefore you are no longer a slave but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So when we talk about brotherly kindness, as I said, specifically we want to talk about our brothers and sisters in Christ, how we treat one another. Do we treat one another with brotherly kindness? And the first thing I want to notice is this relationship that I have with my brother, with my sister in Christ, and how important it is that we are all sons of God. So if I mistreat my brother or my sister, or if I'm saying bad things about them, putting them down in some way or another, I need to realize who I'm talking about. I'm talking about a son of God. I'm talking about a child of God. And how important this relationship is, that we are Christ. And that we have that, that unique bond together as, as children of God. He talks about, there in verse 5, that we might receive the adoption, that we are adopted as children of God. And how important that is. How important that relationship is and how we should 
treat one another and, and how we should, should really cherish that bond and, 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 and that tie that we have with one another, both and all being one in Christ Jesus as are our brothers and sisters in Christ. I think a good example of this can be found in Acts chapter 9. You will turn over there with me. Acts chapter 9. As we know the, the conversion story of Saul, how he was converted to Christ, and before that he had been persecuting Christians. He'd been doing a lot of bad things toward Christians. So when he came to the disciples, they were, some of them were a little leery of him, or a little... Uh, not, not really wanting to accept him, not really sure about it. But somebody steps in. That is Barnabas, the son of encouragement himself. He steps in. Notice what he says here in verse uh, 26 of Acts chapter 9. And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. And he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him. And now he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So he was with them at Jerusalem, coming in and going out. And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Hellenists. They attempted to kill him. So Barnabas steps up here for Saul. He says, you, know, they, they, you can kind of understand probably where they're coming from. Said, They've, if you've seen this guy doing all these terrible things to Christians, arresting them, dragging them out of the cities, beating them, the stoning, this, all these things that have been going on, you can kind of see, well, I don't know about this guy. I don't know if I want to accept him. But no, Barnabas says, no, no, no. This is, this is your brother. This is your brother in Christ. See, he has, he has become a child of God. He has seen, seen the light, to be quite literal in this case. He has seen Christ, and he had become a Christian. He was baptized into Christ a few verses earlier that we see, and he's been preaching the gospel so Barnabas steps up here and, and is there and he's got Saul's back and he, he lets him know this is, this is no longer someone who's beating Christians. This is no longer someone that you might look at as an enemy. This is your brother in Christ. He has been adopted by God as well to be a son, be a child of God. So the next point I want to look at is Knowing about, tells us about brotherly kindness. We, we look at who our brother is, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Now why? Why do we need to show them kindness? What's the purpose for this? If we'll turn with me to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11. And obviously we should show everyone kindness, and this is probably a pretty obvious statement that we need to show them kindness. But we need to understand exactly how important it is. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11, Therefore comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. So as, as our brothers and sisters in Christ, we need uh, the comfort of one another. When we go through, through hard times in this life, uh, we go through troubling times, we see the world all around us, so full of sin, we get maybe mistreated, we go through this, we go through trials, we go through the loss of loved ones, we go through, you know, many different difficult situations. And we need comfort. We need our brothers and sisters in Christ to be there for us. And we need to be there for one another because we're all going to go through things that are difficult for us. We need that comfort when we're down. And the scriptures tell us to rejoice with those who rejoice, to weep with those who weep. And we need a brother or sister to be there for us. And it's very important. We need to edify one another. To uh, build one another up. That's why many times we talk about how important it is to be here. And I'm so thankful for everyone's presence here tonight because it shows just how, how much you value Christ, how much you value your brothers and sisters in Christ because we come here to praise God, to study the Word, but also to stir up love and good works, to encourage, to edify one another. And it's so important. It's so needed because Satan is always trying to get us off the track. Excuse me, off the proper course, off, off the, away from the faith. Trying to distract us with this thing. Trying to distract us with that. And we get caught up 
so many times in the things of this life and we put spiritual things to the side. Well, that's where our brothers and sisters, as, as Christians, we need to be there for one another. If someone starts veering off the path a little bit or starts getting a little distracted, we need to be there to be an encouragement, to edify them, to try to strengthen them, to remind them, hey, we're here to serve God. That's the most important thing. And let's keep that the most important thing. Which brings us to another reason why we, why we need brotherly kindness, why we need edification, why we need one another, is, is to restore each other. Ephesians 6 and verse 1. I should say Galatians 6 and verse 1. I wrote down the wrong uh, book there. But Galatians 6 and uh, verse 1 says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. So that's another reason why we have our brothers and sisters. It's another reason why we need to show kindness and, and, and love toward one another. Because... Like I said, Satan's after all of us. Satan's after each one of us to tempt us to get off the path. And he does it just a little bit at a time. Just a little bit. We talk about, you know, sometimes people wanting to justify just a little bit of sin. Or just a little bit of this that's just maybe, maybe leading to sin. But, oh, it's not really sin. It's just, just a little bit. That's all Satan wants. That's all he wants is just a little bit. Just get you started away from Christ just a little, ever so slightly. And next thing you know, you're gone. You're, you're, Satan's got you. And we, need to, and we need to be aware of that. So when we see that with our brethren, we, we try to be there to show them the love and the support and the encouragement, to try to teach them right from wrong. If, they're, if they get caught up in sin, we need to be able to, to point it out to them and, and, and with love and humility try to bring them back to Christ. Understanding that I could also be lost, that I could also fall away, that Satan could also give me. I need to understand that and have the humility to, to talk to my brothers and sisters, to try to encourage them to do what's right, to show them the brotherly kindness that is needed and understanding that I'm also tempted and I'm not above falling. There's, it's not that Satan can't get to me. Because he certainly can. He's certainly trying. But we need to be there for one another. To help encourage each other. To help keep us on the right path. To stir up love and good works. Uh, and it's so important. And as I look around here tonight. We see, as I said before. Uh, you're here tonight on Sunday nights. On Wednesday nights. Having a Friday night Bible study coming up. Uh, I believe next Friday night. Or this coming Friday night. I should say. It's so good. The more we can get together, the more we can do together to be able to, to study with one another, to encourage us, say, hey, how are you doing? What's going on in your life? Because when you look at needing to restore such a one, needing to restore a brother, we might could have you know, not had to go through that if we, maybe if we knew what they were going through before they might have fallen away, we might could have been there to help them then. But if I don't know you, and if you don't know me, we don't know what each other's going through. It's so important that we know one another, that we're involved in each other's lives, that we can go talk to a brother or sister in Christ, that we can, we can kind of know what's going on and, and, and keep up with each other that way as a family, as a family unit, to be in Christ, to be brothers and sisters in Christ. I believe that's what God would have for us. And the last point I want to look at tonight is how do I show brotherly kindness? What are some things I can see from the scriptures that, that God's telling me that I need to do? If you would turn over to Ephesians 4, look at verses 31 and 32. How do I show brotherly kindness? How do I not be like so much of this world where it's all about me and I do what I want and I don't care what you think about it or you got to say this to me or say that to me or I'll be offended and you can't do that. 
How do I show brotherly kindness? Look at what God's telling us here in Ephesians 4. Verse 31, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. God tells us over and over again throughout the Scriptures how to, how to be uh, towards one another, how to behave, how to treat one another, how to speak. Well, speak kindly. Don't be running people down. Don't be you know, having all this evil speaking, bitterness, wrath. You know, don't be just negative all the time. Be an encouragement. Be an encouragement to one another. Be kind, tender-hearted, you know, caring for one another, listening to each other. And forgiving one another. I think that's a big one too. You know, it's easy to hold grudges against somebody else. Oh, well, they sinned. They did this. That was just so bad. Well, yeah, sin is bad. But also, how much has God forgiven me? You know, how, much, how much forgiveness do I require for me to get to heaven? I don't know how much, but I know it's a lot. I know that much. Look at how much God has forgave me, and I need to remember that. In being willing to forgive one another. Be tender-hearted, to be loving toward one another, as we see many times throughout the scriptures, throughout the uh, the uh, early church in the book of Acts. We see so much, so much togetherness. I think you see, we see them many times praying together, being together with one another. We see when uh, Paul was sent out on his journeys, well, he would have Silas with him, or he would have somebody else. We'd see Peter and we'd see John together. We'd see many, you know. We'd see pairs of them together, being, being there to lift one another up, to encourage one another. And as I talked about a little bit, I think the last time I preached, we talked about kind of facing persecution and how much we need one another. And I think we saw that, that brotherly kindness really, really stand out, really shine in those moments, in that time in the first century, when the church was going through uh, so much persecution they really needed one another. Really needed each other to, to keep the faith going through so much trouble, going through so many hard times. And that's, that's something that's always, or for a long time, has really stood out to me, especially when I read through the book of Acts. When you see that the brethren being so tight, being so close many times, uh, being so willing to help one another is so important. I think so, so important for us today. Romans chapter 12, if you turn over there with me. Romans chapter 12, verse 10 says, Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another. Again, some of the thing the same, along the same lines, showing one another affection, showing one another love, and that is, I care about you. I care what's best for you. You know, giving preference to one another versus our society says, I give all preference to me. It's all about me and what I want. You have to call me by this pronoun and that pronoun or I'll be offended. You have to do this and that for me or I'll be offended. I'll have... No, that's not what God says. You give preference to one another. This life's not all about me. That's a, one big problem we, that, that Satan has really got a hold of in our society. It's so, so many uh, people have just got so self-centered, so focused on self. And, and we get so selfish that... And, you know, it's to our own detriment. You know, God's telling us, I need to care about others. That's not only for their good, that's for my good. That's important for me uh, to care about other people. And that's what, that's what the brotherhood is to be like. That's what the church is to be. Um, brothers and sisters caring for one another, giving one another the preference, striving to be an encouragement to each other. Verse 15 says, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And I think that's so important to be there to support and comfort one another. And, and, and I think uh, many of you all here, many here have done, have done this so well that I've seen in my lifetime. I've seen so many people here be there for other people to take care of them, to take care of the sick, to take care of the elderly, to bring them to services, to be there when someone loses a loved one, to, to hug them, tell them, I love you, brother. I love you, sister, to be there for them. Uh, 
to rejoice with one another, to have good times, just to get together. Uh, like when just with uh, Brother Steve and Sister Sherry leaving here recently, we, we got together a few different times over the last couple months. Everybody just get together. Just It was a joyous occasion. Not because they were leaving. We were sad because of that. But we were also just happy to be together. Just happy that we're all Christians. Just happy that we're serving God and we have love for one another. And that's, that's a great thing, just to get together, to be with one another, to enjoy one another's company, to get to know each other better, to rejoice in the good times, to, to cry with one another in the hard times, the sad times. To be together is a bond and a unity that we need to strive for as brothers and sisters in Christ. And as I said, I, I think we've, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of members in this congregation that I think do very well. And we have a lot of unity, I believe, in this way. And, and I encourage each and every one of you, uh, myself included, to continue in that, to strive in that, to strive to grow in that. And for those that, that maybe are not here tonight, for those that maybe just kind of show up not as much as we'd like them to, to, to be an encouragement to them. Do what we can to encourage others, to strive to show that brotherly kindness and try to, try to get all others to grow, to come to the point where I am committed to Christ. As we've seen in the first century, as we've seen through all this persecution, all things, I'm committed to Christ. As we saw the apostles, when they would get, they'd get arrested, they'd get thrown in prison, they'd say, quit preaching to Christ. And they said, no, we're not going to stop. That level of commitment is what we need. We need to encourage one another in that, to grow in that. So bring this lesson to a close. If you would turn over to 1 Peter chapter 3 with me. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9 says, Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tenderhearted. Be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. We need to love as brothers, to love as a unit, as a family, to be one, so we are all one in Christ. We share a common bond and a common goal that we can all be, be with God in heaven one day. And that's what we look for and that's what we strive for. That's what we want to encourage each and every one to be, to be the, the kind of Christian that God wants us to be. And to keep growing. To never settle for, for how we are as a Christian right now, but to always strive to move forward. To be more like Christ. And to show that brotherly kindness, to show that love and that bond with one another to encourage each other to continue in that. To continue and to grow and strive to be like Christ. For anyone here tonight that's not a Christian, we want to encourage you to become one. If you believe in Christ... He's told us that we must confess Him, that I believe Jesus is the Son of God. We must repent of our sins, to turn away from the sinful life, to, to live for Christ and be baptized for the remission of those sins, to be washed in the blood, to rise up a new creature, and to live faithful until this life is over. And if, you, if you've done that but you've not been living faithful, as long as you're alive, you have the opportunity to repent. Only problem with that is you don't know how long you have. You might have tonight, you might have ten years, might have very little, you just don't know. If you're not right with God, the time to get right is right now. Do not put it off. We don't want anyone to leave here tonight in a lost condition. If there's anything we can do to help you to be right with God, or if you're just going through hard times and you need somebody to pray, there, pray for you, to be there for you, we want to we do that as well. Anything we can do to help you, please come forward as we stand and as we sing.